And I'm here to talk a little bit about our brand new linear amp, this is the KPA 1500. Got a little prop over here, so while we're playing with uh, the technology, uh, I'll uh, come over here and uh, do a little bit of a show and tell. Um, this is the RF deck for the uh, KPA 1500. We've got quite a large uh, heat sink system on it with our fans. Uh, this is a 160 through 6 meters, 1500 watts out. It's uh, got its own built-in. Oh, oh, can I speak into the microphone closer, please? Okay. <laughs> so the uh, KPA 1500 has its own built-in antenna tuner. Um, we are shipping these. We've been shipping these now for quite a few weeks. Um, and uh, quite happy with their uh, uh, performance so far. Um, it, uh, in addition to uh, uh, 160 through 6 meters at 1500 watts, internal antenna tuner, the uh, <coughs> also very well integrated in terms of the LDMOS devices. A lot of folks want to know a little bit about how the uh, output is being produced. And uh, there we go, there's our LDMOS devices, which are actually baked into a heat spreader uh, with an oven and then uh, set up on the uh, dies so that we can then get them into the uh, uh, heat sinks themselves. Um, <clears throat> as far as heat control, flip it over here. On the heat sink side, we have up to three fans the, uh, as the heat sink heats up, the first fan starts up and then the outer fans take off. So uh, come see us in the booth about this. Um, and since I don't have any slides or anything, I'd like to introduce a very special guest here. We have Wayne Burdick, uh, <clears throat> who is our chief technical officer, oversees all of our product design. And he's got a new interesting device for all the uh, summits on the air, soda and uh, mountain topping and folks like that. So Wayne, Wayne Burdick. Thanks David. Everybody hear me okay? Yes. I've been in the booth all day and I'm starting to sound like a frog. Okay, so David just got through showing you, um, you know, our latest product at, at the high end of our product line in terms of power output, price, and weight. Um, I'm going to show you something that's absolutely at the, the low end of our product line in all three categories speak so yes yeah, speak up okay Let me get this a little higher okay so you've seen the high end of the product line that's our our new toy the kpa kick yeah kpa 1500 we also have um, a new product in our line of portable equipment and this is uh, the so you may have heard of our KX line, the KX2 and uh, the KX3 transceivers. These are um, small handheld transceivers that nonetheless are, they, they pretty much have the same features as desktop radios. Uh, they're, they're full software defined radios. They include display and knobs and the uh, KX3 weighs two pounds, KX2 weighs one pound. But it's a full all band, all mode station, both of them. But um, one one weak link is that we haven't had our own antenna products until now. So for quite a while we've um, looked for an antenna that uh, would be ideal for, uh, especially for pedestrian mobile um, or for lightweight uh, camping and hiking. And the trick was we wanted to find or uh, design an antenna that was small enough to fit in, um, in our smallest full station uh, bag. So what I have here, this um, is one of our KX2s. KX2 is, a, uh, is an 80 through 10 meter all mode, including uh, four different data modes, transceiver. As you can see, it's got a nice large backlit display, and it'll run up to 12 watts. Um, it is a software defined radio, but it's also very low current drain, so only 150 milliamps. So we needed an antenna that was actually small enough to go with this radio inside this, uh, this very small bag. Another bag, it's about twice this size to carry more accessories. This is our CS40 bag. And you can't see it very well, but I've got, a, uh, I've got the keyer paddle up here inside that attaches to the rig. I've got an Apple um, ear pod in here. So I actually use that as my headphone and my mic interface. And um, then I uh, carry a paper log sheet in there. So I basically go out in the field all the time like my soda customers, summits on the air, and um, 
try to operate with low power and small antennas and, and uh, see what DX we can work. So the new product is this antenna, which is called um, the AX1. And uh, hopefully you can see it. We don't have any slides here, but uh, uh, if you want to check it out at our booth after the show, we're just in the next building over. So the AX1 is, a, uh, is the first example in our AX line of antennas. It's, um, it weighs three ounces, but it has a very high Q coil wound with uh, high temperature number 20 enamel wire. And it has two coils actually, and a slide switch on the inside to select native resonance on either 20 meters or 17 meters. And another nice thing about the antenna is um, it, the, the resonator is very high Q, so the losses are very low. And if you're using a KX2 or a KX3, it has the built-in automatic antenna tuner. You can also tune this antenna up on 15 meters. So we think of it as a three-band antenna. In a pinch, you can even use it on 30 meters. Um, so this is the, uh, the whip part of the antenna. Uh, the combined length is uh, roughly 51 inches. And so you basically attach the whip like that. Now, there are some other antennas like this um, that are available, but we have the only one that actually covers two bands um, and uh, more, and this one also breaks into two pieces, so it fits into the uh, to the AX1 or to the small bag. And we also the this kit uh, this this antenna is going to be supplied either kit or assembled, continuing in Elecraft's tradition. We have um, most of our products are available both as kit or factory assembled and aligned, and the performance is the same either way. But with the kits you uh, get a bit more knowledge about how the, uh, the product works and more experience in, uh, in kit assembly and soldering. We have uh, really excellent tutorial manuals and uh, a great user forum to get help if you ever had any, have any difficulty building a kit. Um, now, there's one other, or a couple other things here that go with the new AX product line. One of them is this, which is actually something called a bipod. I didn't realize this. Anybody, any gun owners in the audience here? Wow, not very many. That's surprising. I'm going to kill this call. So it turns out that there's a thing called a bipod a, uh, that can be used to hold up one end of an antenna. And so if you just take our AX1 and then snap it into this clip, this now can be attached to your radio. Just a second. Forgive me. It's just a lawyer in Texas. You've got about two minutes. Okay, I'm almost done. All right, so I'm going to actually attach it to the radio, just give you an idea how you use this. So typically, if you're out in the field, you might get lucky enough to have a park bench or a picnic table or maybe a flat rock um, to sit on while you're operating in the field. And we have. So we now have a way of attaching uh, the radio to a right angle BNC connector and that holds the whip in place and this bipod can be adjusted to match any you know, difficult, uh, whether it's flat or rocky surface and keep the whip from rotating in the wind. This was one of those unsolved problems in theoretical mechanics, how to keep a whip antenna from rotating when it's attached with a right angle connector. So that is our new uh, AX1 and the AXB1 uh, bipod, and we also have a tripod adapter, so you can attach your antenna to a, to a small camera tripod and get some additional elevation on your antenna in the field. Um, any quick questions? Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you.